Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mia Hall. I'm with Black Enterprise and today we're interviewing Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey, what up? What's the deal? How you feeling? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Grind mode. Yes, yes, absolutely. So congratulations. Thank Man, you. Victory Lab is out now. Yes. You know what I mean? Stores everywhere, especially right here at yeah, the yeah. Marathon Clothing Store. Absolutely. So definitely big congrats on that. Thank you. Here with Black Enterprise and you're, you know, a businessman. Mm -hmm. um, and you're a businessman, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I want you to, you know, imagine that you know we are sitting here, you know, ten years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to be your greatest accomplishment? Uh, ten years from now, I would just like to have, you know, lay the lay the blueprint down that other people could follow that mm -hmm. come from similar situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, elevated my team my family, you know, myself, and inspire, mm. I would say, would be the most important things um, looking back 10 years from now that I would like to see done. Absolutely, I love it. The takeover, I could already the see takeover. it, man. I, I, yeah. I downloaded the app for yeah. the clothing okay. store. Did you, so get, did you get to like... Yeah, oh my gosh. Late. She, yes, yeah. so um, so one of the Indeed. employees here, yes. Yeah. She showed us like the videos coming up yeah. on and things like that. So, I mean, I've never seen technology like that before. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever seen technology like that before, this being the first smart store. Yeah. So how did that concept, for those that don't know, how did that concept come about? Um. <clears throat> That was really um, an idea that um, a young prodigy, young tech prodigy, that I met on a random. Mm -hmm. He uh, Starbucks, right? Yeah, I heard about this story. yeah, exactly. And he just, you know, um, he just had so many ideas and so much proficiency in the tech space that he was like, "Man, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this. We could do this." And when he showed me that the it's called augmented reality. Mm -hmm. When he showed me that the. The demonstration of what could be done with content and products and, and, and actual installations in the store, I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. This is just take the, the retail space to the next level and also, you know, offer a different experience when you come in here as opposed to buying it online. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. It's 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 not even fully activated just yet. Like we're gonna be able to really really do some next level things once we uh you know start utilizing the technology with content, you know what I mean? We're, you know, right here in LA, you know, mm -hmm. where you're from. Mm -hmm. um, I come from Humble Beginnings myself. I grew up in the projects in Brooklyn. Right. And, you know, just being able, like, I know you talk a lot about, um, you know, young, young people being able to look up to people past, like, athletes and, you know, being past an entertainer. You can look up to be Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg and things like that. Yeah. You talked about that. Um, how do you believe that, you know, where you grew up prepared you to be a businessman, like because they, I want you know young people to know, like you know what you're going through right now could prepare you to be at the top of your level in the business or anywhere you want to be. Um, I just learned about losses mm. and, and embracing the process, and you know an uphill struggle, and starting with nothing, and, and still having a mean. I mean, you don't have resources, you still got your your fire that you carry inside of you, and that's, that's an asset. You know, that's something you can really mobilize and turn it into something. Mm -hmm. um, just people, you know, learning learning the different personalities. You're around so many different personalities and so many different agendas, and you learn how to navigate all of that energy mm -hmm. out of survival, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And learn how to kind of be aggressive with, with your will. You know what I mean? Through all type of different resistance. I think that's what the environment, you know, it'll, it'll either make you into somebody that know how to do that or break you because of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think being, being committed to not folding mm -hmm. just give you a different level of life skills. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you're going to have to navigate and you're going to have to accept some things and you're going to have to you know, stand up mm. and you'll run into other challenges and you'll have that as a reference that mm. I've been in these situations before in a, in a much more um, crucial environment, mm. you know what I'm saying? And I, I survived it in that space, so I'm probably going to be all right. Mm.
Yeah, it's called Vector 90. <clears throat> and then um, the bottom stem center part of it is called uh, Too Big to Fail. And basically it's what you described it as. It's a co-working space for inner, inner city entrepreneurs. Mm. And it's also an incubator, you know, so basically these, these different office spaces is rented by entrepreneurs that are starting apps or got skincare companies or product lines. And so they got investors in the building with David Gross, who's the founder and, and my partner in, and then myself. And then, you know, so every year we're going to be able to do the first round of seating mm -hmm. for, for one of the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And they can make a pitch and say, this is what I'm doing, this is what we need to take it to the next level. And they can have, you know, access to um, investment in the same, <clears throat> in the same building mm -hmm. instead of having to fly somewhere. It's right here, you know, in the Crenshaw district. And I think that's empowering. And the kids yes. are going to be able to get the, the teaching. Yeah, so the, 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 STEM, the STEM center is basically a, the, the concept behind that is to just create a pipeline, mm -hmm. you know, between this inner city in specific, but then also once we scale the, the, the project to different cities, is the whole community of inner cities in America. Like, mm -hmm. go to the NBA, that's cool. Get into the entertainment, that's cool. But then, you know, go into the direction of, of what I just did, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, as well. Even if you're from the bottom, you know, that, that's an that's entry-level opportunity. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you get, you know, develop a skill set, you can, you can have nothing but your understanding and walk into these spaces and succeed. You got to prioritize for real. You know what I mean? You got to yeah. put what, what's most important to you first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that changes from moment to moment because for real, you know, God, the family, that's going to always come first. Mm -hmm. But at times, it might it might impact the big picture in a more positive way to go on the road for three months. And you got you to gotta make that sacrifice to be away from your family mm -hmm. because it's a big picture you're working toward. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I don't, I don't have the... the the secret formula for it, I just got the intention mm -hmm. to do it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and if, I, if I'm too far over here, spend too much time in, in business, I gotta make sure that I balance that, you know what I'm saying, with the family and vice versa. If I'm, if I'm <clears throat> you know, moving a little slower because I, I'm, I'm spending time at the house, I gotta understand we gotta keep this thing in motion. And it's a lot of moving pieces that need to be managed, you know? So the intention, I think, and just knowing it's a blessing, embracing the blessing, and not being intimidated by all this stuff going on. You know, drink your little shake, do your workout, <laughs> you know what I mean? Get your sleep and get back on the grind, you know? It's hard to say one, right? Cause okay. I, I take pages out of a lot of people's books, but, okay. you know, obviously Jay-Z is the Michael Jordan mm -hmm. of, of the whole culture right. and hip hop and just business. And then you got people like Jermaine Dupri that is not as <clears throat> celebrated as he should be, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, but just, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of what was done, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I know how critical the decisions are and how hard it is to, to execute on the level he executed on. Um, Puff, obviously Puff is a mogul and also just a unique energy, you know what I mean? And, you know, I got to be around Puff and see the interior. And, you know what I mean? It's just a real um, bossed up operation. You know what I'm saying? Um, Master P, you know, uh, Suge Knight, for real. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Dre. Um, and then people outside of, I mean, I, I wouldn't even say outside of music, but just outside of the, the, the attention that an artist has. You know, people like Barry Gordy sold Motown mm -hmm. for 800 million mm -hmm. early. Once you get the information on what they did, you mm -hmm. know, Dang Dash, mm -hmm. Biggs, you can't just say Jay without saying Biggs and Dang. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Emery and Tata, that was a whole Absolutely, unit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just the whole Rockefeller, Irv Gotti, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. DNY from Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. And Irv, I mean, his brother Chris, the whole team that built uh, Murder Ring. Mm -hmm. all, of the, all of the, you know, street entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and indie movements, you know what I'm saying? Jay Prince, mm -hmm. you gotta say Jay Prince. Mm -hmm. You gotta say Tony Draper, mm -hmm. you gotta say Rick Ross, mm -hmm. MMG. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot That's that a lot, you, you yeah. could take pages and, you know what I'm saying, learn from these blueprints mm -hmm. and came from them environments where, you know, it was against the odds. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, nobody like complaining. Mm -hmm. Once you do it, you just thank God that you've done it. But if you really put the microscope on what it means to go through all that, it's, it's like superhuman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different level of respect that I got for individuals that do it. Mm -hmm. Even I just try it, you know what I'm saying? But that actually can execute it. You know, for, for your fans and people that love you, I just want to um, do a quick little game uh, right. to ask you a few questions, all right? All right. So good. this is, it's called Last Time That I. Check. Right, but but this is not going to be checked. It's going to be like last time that I ate this, what I had. Last oh, okay. time that I, you know, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to start like, all right. So last time that you sang a song out loud, which song was it? That is love from that Jockey's record. Oh, okay. I was in the club and it was going <laughs> off and I was off my little drink. I was okay, playing. okay. You know All right, the last time that you ate, what'd you have? I had a salmon salad. Last time that I traveled for pleasure, I went to? I went to Albany, Bahamas. Hmm, it's, it's, a, it's a fire little resort mm. that one of my business partners put me up on. Mm. So I went out there and spent like a week and just chilled after all the promo we was doing. Okay, yeah. all right. And then got back to work? Then got back to work. <laughs> Amy's Gang. No, mm. Molly's Gang. It was about this woman that was a, um, running these poker games. Mm. And it was based on a true story. And she had all type of high profile clients. Mm. And she got indicted by the feds. Mm. You know, I, was, I skipped over it 20 times because <laughs> it was like Pink Rising. It was called Mo uh, Molly's Game. So <laughs> I'm thinking like, it was a love it? story or something. When I really looked into it, it was, it was some, like, some hustling, some like, you know, she bossed all the way up in the movie. It was dope. So he's 18 months, so, you know, when I talk, I'm sure he hears me, but he don't always yeah. respond. It's, you know, I told him I loved him. Okay. You know, told him we do push ups. That's one thing he responds Aww, to. So we okay. do our little push ups every morning. You know what I mean? So that's that's probably the last instruction I gave him to give me some push ups. And he, he, you know, he, he just do this. He get on his phone. <laughs> and think that's a push up. You know, he got this part down. You know yeah, but he's almost there. He getting there, yeah. The last time that I learned a lesson, it was. What was the last lesson you feel like you learned? The last lesson that I learned was. You know, sometimes you learn the same lesson over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's something that's been consistently reminded to me. It's that you don't want to be rigid and like stubborn, but certain things you just, it's, it's more dangerous to compromise than it is not to sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I've been, I've been getting reminded that over and over that, you know, you got to have faith in your foundation, what you believe in, and stay to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want it's uncomfortable, you want it's like, um, confrontational. Mm. You still gotta be uncompromising. You know? well, thank you so much for your time, you man. Such a yeah, thank such you. a pleasure to meet you. Nah, I appreciate and you coming down. No, I appreciate your time for yeah. real. And yeah. look, y'all already heard it from Nip himself. Man, mm -hmm. stick to your guns, man. Don't compromise and look what you can look what you can accomplish. Alright, y'all. See you next time. Yeah.